Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. In today's video, we're going to go over the, the command under the Edit Mesh menu up here. I can break this off. And the command in particular we're looking at is the Flip Triangle Edge command. It's a relatively simple command. And as you can see from the title, it says Triangle Edge. So first thing right off the bat we know we need triangles for this to work as opposed to four-sided faces or quads. You can also see down here in the help line when I mouse over this command, it says flip the edge between two triangles. Okay, so it kind of gives us a little synopsis there what the tool does. So first I'll need something, a mesh with triangle faces. So I can simply create a cube. I'll scale it up a bit and I'll just hide the grid for now. And you can see here each side of this cube is a square and not a triangle, right? So we can quickly fix this by going to Mesh Triangulate. And this command will convert quads or four-sided faces into tries or triangles with a click of the button. There you go. It splits all the squares into two triangles. So now we have triangle faces, right? So again, under Edit Mesh, we have Flip Triangle Edge. If I click it right now, first of all, I'll need to have an edge selected. You have to have the edge selected first. So I'm going to right click and hold on my cube, go to edge component mode. The cube will turn blue, indicating it's in component mode now. And you'll see that as I mouse over edges, they'll highlight red. I can click on one of these edges that splits the two triangles like this. Edit mesh. Again, I'll just break this off so it's always available. Flip triangle edge, and it flips. It goes from this corner to this corner and flips to that corner to that corner. That's essentially it. Um, if that's all you'd like to see, then congratulations, we're done. A flip triangle edge is relatively straightforward, but I wanted to point that out. Now there's also these two commands below here, spin edge backward, spin edge forward. Now this doesn't ne does not necessarily need triangles to use, but it kind of does the same thing. If I click it, you'll notice it will spin or flip the triangle edge. Now because this is an edge between two triangles and there's no other edges involved, it's relatively one or the other. There's nothing really to change uh, drastically what's going on here. But let me look for a more complex mesh that we can show this command with something a bit more complex than a cube. Okay, so here we have this kind of random uh, shape I put together. It's just a lot of different uh, shapes and facets to it. It's not a cube, right? There's, there's a little bit more involved to it than just being a four-sided or, excuse me, a six-sided cube. So if I go up here, I can click this little icon here. This is the wireframe on shaded button. If I click it, then when I click off of it, you can see the uh, wireframe is a little bit easier since it's displayed on the mesh. So we have a combination here of triangles and quads um, all over the place. Okay, so we can kind of see what this command, flip triangle edge, and also spin edge backwards and forwards, these two also, uh, will how this will affect uh, the shape. So one thing I want to point out to you, if I look at this object from this kind of oblique angle, you can kind of see here, this kind of dips. You see that dip here that's happening? So this might be an example of why we might want to flip this edge. So if I click this edge, and I'm going to look at it from this angle, this really harsh angle here, so we can see this dip here in the shape. And I'll say spin edge backward. Notice that it spins the edge around, and instead of it now having this dip in the shape, it kind of fills in more because we have this kind of. Uh, oblong distance here, the shape that we have here, and if the edge is spin the other way, we get that dip in the shape versus having it more protrude outward like this. Does that make sense? Let me uh, do it a couple times maybe, just to make sure that you kind of get the difference in how it makes the shape look. See that? So spinning that edge one way or the other really changes that flow of the surface quite drastically. Okay, so that's an example, and the same down here. If I will click on this one and spin that edge backward or forward, you can see that shape change. And down here we have a little bit more than just four sides, right? 
of a square shape. We have, have it flips to here. I can spin it again. And now it's like this oblong edge down here that doesn't really work. I would not recommend keeping that. Spin it again. Now it's over here. So it's kind of traveling around this little surface here as I spin the edge around. And so depending on what shape you're looking for or what kind of flow you want, like if I don't want this dip to be there, I can spin it this way. And no, I don't want it to be flush like this because that's creating this little bit of a sliver sliver face. You can barely even see it there. Here, there there's the face right there. This little sliver of a face, which is not ideal for uh, a surface. So I want to try to avoid that too. So I'll spin it again. So now it's over here. Okay, so that might be more in line with what I want the surface flow to be. There's also that direction, which is kind of back to where it was. So <clears throat> this would be what I'd want to probably change it to if I wanted to avoid that um, dip in the surface like we have up here. See that? So just by spinning a single edge, you can get um, a lot of differences in how the surface will flow, depending on the complex, how complex the object is. If it's the cube, again, you won't get much difference at all. If it's something like this, which has lots of different protrusions and things, you know, coming off and going different directions and so on, you can get a lot of different shapes. So same kind of, if we look at where this circular shape kind of meets the square shape, you can see we get some kind of sh weird shading differences, especially right, right here with this edge right there. So I could potentially spin it or flip it to see if it's any better or worse. And I can press the G key, which is the shortcut for redoing the last thing I did. I'm actually going to change the color of this material. It's kind of bright. It might make it a little hard to see. When delete history, go to my material here, just kind of change the color down a bit to be more of that kind of darker gray color, which I'm used to. There we go. So now I can see a little better. See there, just kind of spinning back and forth. And you can kind of look and see like which which way is better for this particular surface. And this one's a bit more subtle. But you can kind of see that how it does di a difference occurs there. And you can do this for you know almost any edge. The spin edge backwards and forwards is a little bit more reliable versus flip triangle edge. Because again, the flip triangle edge, you have to have triangles, right? And with a flip edge or spin edge backwards and forwards, it's not uh, limited in that way. Again, something like this, perhaps instead of all these edges all converging to this one point here, maybe I want to spin this around to maybe come down here so that we kind of spread that uh, those points around a little bit so it's not all converging on one spot. That's just an example of something you might want to do depending on the circumstances that you're in. Or even, let's say we want to spin this around like this and I can kind of Move these around until we get, you know, something like this maybe. And we can even see, like, you know what, this edge here, I don't even need it. Just delete it. And now they're all kind of going up and down all the way across versus having these uh, triangles or these pie chart looking shapes on the right side. So that's essentially the gist of this command. The flip triangle edge, spin edge backwards, spin edge forward. You can see here that there's these two shortcuts, control alt left, control all right. If you wanted to do so with a control alt left arrow and right arrow, there we go. Works the same way. I find it easier just to click on than click the button. Uh, but, you know, whatever floats your boat. Anyway, that's essentially the gist of it. Relatively simple command, but it does have a big impact on the shape, especially something like this over here where you can get that oblique angle and see that how the surface dips down or, or not. Another uh, reason why you may want to add a triangle edge Let's say, for example, if I delete this edge. So now this square shape, you see how it, it still has this kind of dip to it? So if I were to, say, bring this into a, a game engine, for example, like Unreal or Unity or something like that, typically a game engine will automatically add triangle edges to your objects. And it might cut it this way instead of that way or vice versa, depending on what you want. It might actually cut it in a way that you don't want it to. You might bring it into the engine and find that it looks like this with the dip like that unless what, what you really want is to be cut this way and so that might be a reason why you want to add it in manually 
because if you bring it into the engine and you just notice that weird shading difference between the surface there and you're like why is it dipping down like that that might be why I need to cut that edge in and, and spin it or something like that okay I'm gonna cut this video off there I hope you uh, learned something from that and got something out of it if you have any questions or if I missed anything please don't hesitate to ask or comment below I really appreciate that and I hope you all have a wonderful day